different type of elect electrics components. Um, and also, uh, you'll have a good understanding of um, voltage drop and you know, how the voltage uh, drop can impact when it comes to designing CCTV system and how important that is. And also, um, that ohm's law, how important ohm's law for us uh, so that we can work out this voltage drop. You know? And also, again, um, not to forget, now uh, we are sort of, um, we are um, doing quite a lot of IP cameras, so PoE cameras. So when you come to PoE camera, there's only one type of PoE cameras you have, or whether you have different type of, or there's a variance in PoE. Now, where is it? Can you get it? Uh, so you, you know, we're going to look into that as well, right? So these are the few uh, areas that we're going to look into, right? So the learning outcome. So once, um, once we complete this webinar, uh, you should be able to understand and uh, describe uh, what is a voltage drop in um, in a CCTV installation, right? Um, and also, you should be able to explain the difference between a different type of PoE power uh, when you come to uh, the standards, right? Uh, so, uh, and also, um, again, the basic uh, electronics um, uh, equipments or components that are being uh, in, uh, used in a uh, security environment, right? Uh, so the contents of this webinar is we go. Uh, we're going to look into the basic of electrons, how electrons work, um, and, and then we're going to look into Ohm's law. So the relationship between uh, voltage, resistance, uh, and current. Uh, we're going to discuss about that, and, then, and we're going to also discuss what significance it has when it comes to CCTV insulation, right? Um, then we've got PoE types, uh, PoE types and the power level. We're going to talk about that. Um, then uh, voltage uh, drop. Um, so these are the... Uh, uh, sort of the topics that we'll be discussing uh, during this webinar. Uh, to start with, um, so you have conductors, non-conductors, um, then you have, I mean, we call it insulators, um, then you've got semiconductors. So anyone knows about what is, uh, what is meant by an electrical conductor? So you can use the chat to sort of, um, you know, make your comments. So what is it meant by electrical conductor? So electrical conductor is basically anything that can uh, let the electricity pass through is the electrical conductor, right? Um, so we have a number of uh, electrical uh, conductors that we use in CCTV installation or in, in electrical uh, work. Um, copper is a good conductor. You've got aluminium, uh, then you've got uh, gold, Nickel, uh, the different types of conductors. No sound. The only person in the thing without any sound. Right. So you've got different types of uh, conductors. Um, so start with yeah, you have. Got, um, I mean, gold will be a better conductor because the resistance level of uh, gold is comparably uh, very less compared to copper. Uh, when you compare copper with aluminium, uh, aluminium have more resistance uh, than copper. So copper is a better conductor than aluminium. So you you have different conductors. So which conductor that we use a lot in um, in um, CCTV, uh, in, in electrical wires? So the wires that you get, what conductor is that you often come across? Copper, yeah, exactly. Cop copper is the one that, you know, most time that we use copper conductor because, uh, I mean, copper is a very good conductor compared to aluminium and it's not expensive as uh, uh, you know, silver or, or gold, you know, I mean, the goal will be the fantastic conductor to use, but then, you know, then you have to have security guards standing outside every single cables, uh, you know, because so, it, it's expensive, you know. So practically, copper is, a, is the conductor that we use. So what you have to understand is uh, what is a conductor? It can let the electricity pass through. And what is a non-conductor or insulator? It is like plastics, wood, things that can't get um, let electricity pass through is um, non-conductor or uh, known as insulators, right? Um, so why is important to us? Because if, if you go if you go and buy a screwdriver, um, do you, does anyone know the UK standards for the screwdrivers? Is that the insulator or uh, can you use non-insulated screwdrivers? And if it's insulated, how much the tip supposed to be exposed? Or well, what what sort of length of the tips? I mean, is there an electrician around? Five exactly five millimeter. Yeah, so you can't go more than that. Right. So, so it's, it's understanding uh, the 
the environment that we work in is so important for us, you know, and it's the reason I'm just, you know, going through this. So if you look at uh, these conductors, um, uh, the difference, and I'm, you know, I, I, you know, I love using the word scientific uh, explanation, right? Because we got this uh, phrase being used a lot, isn't it? Scientific. So the scientific explanation of a conductor is basically it's got movable electrons, right? And so that helps uh, the electricity to pass through, right? So if you go to non-conductors, you don't have movable electrons, but they do have electrons, right? So this is then the electric that, that this will help or facilitate uh, the electricity to pass through. So now we know what a conductor is. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at um, anything uh, that works against the flow of electricity is known as resistant, right? Uh, so, so you can see that uh, uh, the slide there. Uh, so you see the small rings that are put there. It's imagine those are the electrons, right? And um, so they're, they're now passing through this uh, pipe and anything that resists this from the other hand, it's known as resistance, right? Now it could be, uh, to start with, it could be, the first thing is the, the material, right? What is it made of, you know? Uh, there's a difference between, as I said uh, before, there's a difference between copper, aluminum, silver, right? So that is, uh, uh, it's important to us, you know? The, the material that you use uh, depends on that the resistance level may differ, right? Um, so where else in electronic securities you find a cable that don't, well, we don't use a copper cable. Instead of using a copper cable, is that any other application? We use uh, aluminum cables. Now, when I say electronic uh, applications, uh, security application bins, it could be an intruder alarm, it could be fire alarm, it could be CCTV or access control. A lot of, the, a lot of these applications, we use cable, which is a copper cable, right? Now, my question is, is that any other any application you come across aluminium cable instead of copper cable? Right. Now, anyone anyone sort of done an uh, intruder alarm system in the UK? Right. So if you look at the intruder alarm cable, right, they're not copper; they're aluminium. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, so somebody said yes. Where 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 said yes? Yeah. Isn't it? You, you do the intruder alarm cable, it's aluminium. So the resistance level of that cable is different uh, from a copper cable, right? And also, uh, has anyone done, like, I know some of you have already uh, installing uh, CCTV cameras, the analog cameras, quartz cable, right? Now, you see the shield. Um, it's sometimes uh, you get copper shield, but some, in some uh, manufacturers uh, do sell cables with aluminium instead of copper. So they do have two different resistance levels, right? So uh, sometimes you buy a crux cable, 100 meters, uh, it could cost you like, let's say, um, no, I might be wrong in this, but it's, let's say uh, 30 pounds, right? And you buy it from another manufacturer, it costs you only 15 pounds. And you see, I've got a fantastic deal. But the reality is that the second manufacturer who sold the cable to you, it's not copper plated, it's aluminum. So aluminum costs less, right? Um, so it's, it's kind of understanding uh, so, uh, how these materials work. You know, copper cables are always uh, better than aluminum cable. Is Louis around today? Is Louis, are you there? Because I don't see a lot of questions coming out from you. And you know, so you've been very quiet today. <laughs> right, anyway. Um, right, so, uh, so this is uh, about resistance. It's about anything that resists the flow of um, electricity is known as uh, resistance. <laughs> right, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so he said he's busy with his son. All right, good. Um, right. So now pushing, what, what push this electron is voltage, right? So let's uh, move on to the next slide. All right. Factors affecting the resistance, temperature, right? Now, if you go and see a cable um, uh, data sheet or the instruction, you will now see, they will say 20 Celsius, when they uh, you know, mention about the resistance level of the cable, they will also mention about 20 Celsius, the temperature. So the temperature does make a difference. I mean, it, it, it makes a difference when it comes to the resistance of the cable, you know? Uh, so, right, that's one thing, right? Uh, so I'm getting some crosstalk here. Right, 
Thank you. Okay. Right. And, and the length of the wire, right? So if you're running the cable for a longer distance, um, then the resistance is going to be higher, right? The, the longer the cable, uh, the resistance increases that. And uh, then the third factor is the cross-sectional, uh, the cross-section of uh, the wire. Yeah, so what that means is the thickness of the cable, right? So if you go, I mean, once you've done this webinar, if you go to your consumer unit, and if, it's, if you can see the cable, if you look at the cable that goes to your lighting circuit, would be a thinner cable compared to your ring, right? The lighting circuit would be uh, a, a thinner cable, 1.5 mil, and then when you look at your ring, it could be 2.5 mil. Right, so the thicker the cable, uh, the lesser the resistance. Now think about uh, motorways. In the UK, you have M1, M25, and you've got four lanes. Imagine if you put another four more lanes, yeah, the conjunction will be less, isn't it? So it's the same way it works. The, the thicker the cable, the resistance is lower. The thinner the cable, resistance is higher, right? Um, then obviously the one that we already uh, mentioned, the nature of the uh, material. Obviously that's talk about the material. What is the material is made of, right? This is copper, aluminium or silver. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, right. Um, okay, some, so, I mean, if I hear background noise, uh, I might just mute you. So don't worry about it. As long as you can hear me, that, that, that's fine, right? Okay, you. so if you don't hear me, let me know. Right, so what is a resistor? Now, why is it important? Because um, we're doing a CCTV course, but this model that we're doing, it's pretty common for CCTV and um, intruder alarm and the other electronic uh, uh, security courses that we run. Uh, so one of the important components of uh, uh, electronic security is resistor, right? Um, so you could see here uh, the resistor here. So has anyone ever worked with a resistor be before? So anyone else come across a resistor before? No. No, right. Okay. I'm not. No. Okay, fine. So what, what is this resistor? It's like it resists the uh, electricity, the flow of electricity. That's what resistor is oh, used for, oh, oh. right? Now, so how does it, we measure, how we measure the resistor is based on uh, the color code. You, know, you have something like a color band and it's defined the resistor value. Right. Um, so we, we have a, we'll have another webinar. We'll talk about exactly where we use this resistor. But uh, just to give you an idea, if you go to the internet and just type uh, intruder alarm panel uh, circuit board, right, you'll find resistors being used there, right? Also, uh, to monitor, so monitor a, 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 a circuit uh, in an intruder alarm system, let's say it's a PIR, any type of detectors, uh, we use resistors uh, to have a fully uh, uh, monitoring circuit. Right now, it's quite difficult for me to explain it here, but then we'll have other webinars, the, the intruder alarm webinars that we've done recently. So, if you go to our YouTube uh, page, uh, you will find uh, the webinar we've done, so you will know what, what I'm talking about here. But resistors are uh, you know used in a lot of electrical um, applications, right? So, you need to know how to read resistors. So, reading resistor is by the color code, right? So, you've got different color codes here. So, I've done a small like small color code uh, resistors I did it myself. So I've got like four bands here. So you can see four bands from my left to uh, right. Not, I've seen that's the way you see it. Uh, the red, black, red. Then I've got the last one as or, um, gold. Now I didn't have the gold color, so I used a uh, yellow color there, right? Uh, so if you've been given uh, a resistor, how would you read the resistor value? That's what we're gonna look into, right? So here, I um, hope you can see this uh, table, right? In this table, you've got different colors and different values associated with different colors, right? Now, let's look at the um, resistor on the top, right? Now, you can see that it's the first color band it has is uh, blue, right? So now, if it's blue, you look at this table, now you, now you may ask me where would I find this table? If you just say resistor color chart or table on the internet, you will find this here and you, know, you can download it. So it's a pretty universal table that we use. Um, so if you look at the first band, it's blue. So if you then look at the numbers, you will find next to blue, you have number six, right? So you simply write six. Okay, so you're not gonna do anything, you're simply gonna write six. 
right? Then you look at the second color is red, right? So if you look at the number next to red is number two, right? You're not looking at the multiplier side, you're looking at your left-hand side, the, the digits, right? The second digit is red color. And if you look at the number, that's number two. So now you write number two. So you're not multiplying, you're not adding, you're not doing nothing. You're just simply writing six and then you're writing two right next to it, right? So now you've got 62. Now this one, if you look at this particular resistor, uh, I'm not sure how it's not visible the last band, but it also have a last band, right? Uh, which is, I believe, the silver color. It's very not, it's not really visible there. But if you, if you take all these bands, it's got four bands. So it's got four bands. Now, when you have four bands, right? The last band is the tolerance. The band before the last one would be your multiplier, right? So how does it work when it's uh, five bands? So when you have five bands, the fifth band is a tolerance. The band before the last one, which will be the fourth band, which is the multiplier. Now, if you've got six band, the sixth band is the tolerance, and the fifth band is the multiplier, right? So now, in this case, we have four bands, right? So the first band is a digit, which is a blue, so we put six. The second band is again a digit, so it's again red, we put number two. Now, the third band is again red. But this time, we're not going to write number two next to it. We're going to look at our right-hand side, the chart called multiplier. Then you're going to find the value for red. Now, if you see the value for red is 10 to the power of 2. So what is it 10 to the power of 2? 10 times 10, right? Um, so 10 times 10 is what? 100, right? So now what you do is you have already written down 6 and 2, which is 62. Now, when, it's, when I say multiplier, we're going to multiply that by 10 to the power of 2, right? So that's 100. So 100 multiplied by 62 or vice versa, 62 multiplied multiply by 100, which will now give you 6,200 ohms. Now, this is how you read a resistor through your color chart. I'm going to show you how to read it with the uh, multimeter. Uh, in, in our next slide, but I'm just looking at the resistor with the colors. This is how you read the resistor, right? So let's do another one. And let's look at the second, the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one, it's not four band. This time it's a five band resistor, right? So the first color is green, right? So now you look for the green value, that will be five. The second color is well, it looks blue to me, right? I will say blue. Okay, so the second color is blue. So five and six. The third color, now this time the third color is not multiplier. If you see here, I've written down this third color. I'm not calling it multiplier. But here, the, th the first example, the third color was multiplier, multiplier because it had four bands, right? All right, so I've got somebody asking me a question. That's right. Yeah, it's blue. Yeah, normally blue. That's what I thought to blue there. <laughs> so Livy was telling me, Louis, so Livy was helping me saying that's blue, right? Uh, Louis, I, I might have a bit of a frequency problem, color blind. <laughs> right. So the third color is black. <clears throat> so the black, if you look at the value for black, is zero. So what you're now going to do is the first color is uh, five. The second color is blue, five, six. The third color is zero. So you're going to have five, six, zero. When 500, 560 right? And the fourth color is multiplier. In this case, it's orange. So it's three. So how do you read resistors with the, um, the multimeter, right? You simply use these two props to read the resistors. Resistor, remember, is passive. So it doesn't matter which end that you're going to hold these props, right? So just holding it with your uh, multimeter, the two legs of the resistor, that will reveal the resistor value. Right, just like this. Right now, it's so easy for us to use the multimeter to read the resistor. So why, why on earth we gonna, we have to learn about this color chart? Is because, I mean, if you are a person uh, who's very organized, you will have a, a small box of resistors. You put the right, right resistor in the right box so that you know it's four point six, four point six, or two point two, one one k, and so on. But if you put everything into one box, and if you just want to take one K resistor, what you now do is look for brown, because brown is one. 
then you can cross check that or check it again with your multimeter to make sure it's one you know so if you're looking for let's say 4k resistor 4.7k resistor so you can look for the one start with yellow band you know so that's where it can help you right um but again you always have to check it with um, because anything 40 also going to have yellow band four is going to have yellow band and also 0 0.4 is going to also have yellow band so once just because it's got to start with a yellow band does not necessarily mean it's a 4.7k 4 resistor but at, 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 at least it gives you you're going to pick only the ones with a yellow band not every single resistor and waste your time finding where the 4.7 is right that's where it's going to help right so uh, that's why it's it's it's, uh, it's good to know the uh, colors but again uh, I, I i can pretty much assure you once you start becoming an electronic engineer, when you start doing uh, CCTV and intruder alarm insulation, you will know this because this is something you're going to do day to day life, right? Mm. Okay, so now we got a digital meter. Has anyone used a digital multimeter before? Yes. Right, that's great. Okay. Um, now, so we're going to look into these values, right? How this ones work, right? Um, about a second, right now. Now, what you see is a multimeter, so you've got different values, so you can set on different sort of parameters. Um, then you got uh, uh, the props that you could change it, so you could leave it on voltage or amperage. Um, the comb remains the same. You can now see here it's switched off, right? And you got different values there to start with. The first one is 600 volt, right? Um, and then you also see a hazard sign here. Can you see that? Hazard sign, right? Then you got 200. So these two comes under hazard sign. Why do you think there is a hazard sign for 600 and 200 volt? Because it's called high, it's it's high voltage, right? So it can cause fatal uh, injuries, right? Because uh, anything uh, more than uh, fifty volt, uh, fifty to hundred thousand volt, will be seen as high voltage, right? So that's quite dangerous. That's why you normally, you know, when you switch on, you'll see a hazard sign, right? That's a hazard sign. And you got six hundred, but if you see the V, there's a wavy line here on top of the V, right? Does so anyone know what that tells you? that tells you it's an alternating current uh, so that means the current will flux the voltage will fluctuate right um so this is uh, you could read if you are reading anything like 230 volt you can't read it on 200 you have to turn it to 600 right so in the uk we we work with 230 volt so we have to put on 600 to read the 230 volt right so if you put on 200 you may not read it because it's more than 200 the threshold right uh, but if you go to uh, america and different part of the world it's 110 volt. So now you put it on 200. You don't need to put on 600. Put it on 200. Because 110 is still within the range, so you can read it, right? Um, then I will go to the amperage part of it, right? Um, now, what is the uh, uh, amperage? Is the current? So you can now you can see that we're going to cover what amperage. Come back, and then you can have more understanding about this uh, every uh, measurement of that you find in this uh, multimeter now if you see the amperage there a then you've got this um line that straight lines right that means it's the current but it's uh, a direct current so it's, it wouldn't fluctuate right direct current um then you come here uh, if you come here then you have you, you then have what you call a continuity check right so you can check the continuity of a circuit uh, this one again give you the resistant value but it also give you a uh, bus a sound so that you know the continuity is there right and then when you come down this part of the uh, meter you then find the ohm signs which is the uh, sign that we used uh, to represent ohms right uh, so ohms is basically the resistance right so now you could check the resistance using this uh, ohm these settings. The value depends on what you're reading, right? So you can put on a 2 million uh, ohms or you can put on 200 ohms, depends on what you're reading. So if you're reading anything like 4.7, you rather put it on 20, you don't put it on 2 or 200 because it's too small, you will not read it. But if you put on 20, you will read 4.7.
But if you're reading 47, you're not going to get it up to 20, so you have to then move it to 200K, right? So that's what it is. Then when you come back here, you then find V. Then like we had it with the A, the V also have straight line. So what that means, that signify it's a, a direct current voltage here. Yeah? So that means the voltage would not fluctuate. It will be the constant flow of voltage, right? So anything that come out from battery is a, a voltage will not fluctuate, right? Um, so again, uh, direct current, doesn't matter whether it's direct current or alternating current, they both can be uh, dangerous uh, if you exceed a certain uh, level, right? So uh, in an alternating current, uh, the, the threshold is, we call extra low voltage, which is 50 volt, uh, right? So what is voltage? Voltage is a pressure uh, we apply to push all the electrons, right? Voltage help the current to travel. So the more voltage you have, the, more, the, far, the further you could push this current. So voltage is not actually the power or the energy. It is, it is a part of the energy, right? So if you look at the watts, voltage times current is watts, right? So voltage is the pushing power, right? Uh, so when you come to voltage, we already discussed about it. Um, you got two types of voltage. You got alternating voltage, and you also got uh, direct voltage, right? So the current fluctuate, the current don't fluctuate, right? DC and AC. So AC voltage uh, is change. You know, obviously in the UK we use 50 hertz, but again, it's, um, it's, it's fluctuate, right? That's the AC, we discussed about that already. Uh, so how to measure that AC, uh, DC voltage? Uh, so let's say start with the DC voltage. How do you measure it? Um, you, you will have to uh, use your multimeter to measure it. So I go back to the multimeter again. Uh, you, you can see now your the power supply. So you got the uh, the props, the red and the black. The the red goes with the plus, um, and the black goes to the minus. Um, then you can see the voltage there. So you have, you have to leave the COM port as it is and you connect the multimeter, the other part, to your uh, voltage. Um, the, you have the true props, so you now measure between plus and minus. What you're doing is you're measuring between start and end of the journey. So if you got a battery, then you have that reconnected to a light bulb. You have the plus that's connected to the plus and the minus that connects to the minus. Now if you look at it, it's a circuit. So start from plus and it ends with a minus which back to the battery again, right? So when you measure the voltage, you're measuring the difference between the uh, energy. Uh, so what we call is the potential energy difference between start and end of the journey, right? So you're gonna measure between plus and minus, then that's gonna give you the voltage, what pressure that's been applied, right? So that's how you measure the voltage. So that's what we uh, mentioned here, plug uh, uh, the props to the com, which is the ground, and uh, then the red to the voltage, then you can measure it by using on one cable, red, and then minus. So, so I'm gonna show that in a minute, one second. Measuring amperage is slightly different. So you don't do the same way. Measuring amperage, you're measuring the flow of the current. So your uh, multimeter is going to be in series to the current circuit, right? The electricity circuit. And that's how you measure the amperage. But you've got to be a bit cautious about this. When you do a high voltage, uh, you don't want to touch it, right? So using a clamp meter would be probably a, a better option when you come to uh, measuring a current in a high voltage, right? Um, so I'm just going to go through uh, a, a small video just to explain to you uh, how this um, current is measured, right? You can see I have the power supply. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the positive side of it, uh, the right cable out. So uh, you could take the red cable out. So that will disconnect the power for the camera. So the next thing uh, for you to do is to set the multimeter. So now you have the props, but you have to change it on this multimeter I have to change it to 10 amp. Because um, um, on the other side, I can only read up to 250 milliamps. So if I put it on 10 amp, I'm in the safer side because it could be anything like 300 milliamps. So I can't do that. Um, so I'll put, change my multimeter. Then I'm gonna clamp this uh, cable now. I use a crocodile clamp, uh, so I'll just clamp it uh, to one part of the 
multimeter, which is the red props. Uh, then I'm going to connect the camera now. So the camera will be then connected to uh, the power. So now the camera is connected. Uh, still, the camera won't work because I need to complete the circuit. So to complete the circuit, um, I'm going to use my black props. Um, then I'm going to complete the circuit by grounding or sort of connecting to the minus. And before I do that, I need to make sure I put the setting to 10 amp. And so I can read anything up to 10 amp DC, wall, uh, DC current. So now the circuit is completed. Um, now you, the camera will start working and start taking um, the amperage. Um, any camera when you start, it takes the maximum. Uh, up, uh, so now I can see it's taking almost uh, 0 0.12 amp. It'll be interesting to know uh, what happens when the infrared gets activated. So I can use this one. So you can now see it's going to infrared. Now I take it back again and the infrared is, uh, is going back to normal and I can see the color. So the screen that you're seeing behind is, is the screen of this camera. So I'll close it again. You see that infrared is activated. Then I take it away and I can see the color comes back. So the infrared is deactivated. So while this is happening, I want to see how much we, uh, the power that we're drawing. So let's start. Uh, so I'll hold my, um, multi I'll connect my multimeter, I'll hold the props and um, now let me um, activate the infrared. So let me deactivate and so let me take the car off first to start with. So I'm just going to take the car off and see what happens um, to the amperage that it's drawing. So if you can see that when I take the car off, um, it drops to 0 0.05 from 0 0.12. So it's only drawing a little bit power when it's uh, during the daylight. And when it's infrared, that's when it draws the most. So now you can see it's drawing more. And taking it out, uh, when I take it out, then it only takes 0 0.05. So if you look at it, I don't know you can see the whole picture here. Um, you can see that what we saw on the video, that's the, uh, uh, the diagram of um, a power supply. Now, if you look at it, um, you got here, you're connecting it to, you're, you're making your multimeter as a part of this circuit, right? That's then go to the camera. So the, the camera is powered through your multimeter. So then the current will go through your multimeter and that's how you measure the current, right? Now, when you do that, you've got to make sure you safely isolate this uh, power before you do that. So you don't want that. I mean, obviously it's not a huge voltage as such to, you know, uh, uh, cause any injuries. But again, you don't want any appliance to sort of, uh, you know, go faulty and stuff. So it's basically you tap the fuse out or you switch the uh, switch off the power supply and you then wire your uh, multimeter in series, then you wire it back, then you switch it back again. Yeah. Now, if you do this one, you'll see uh, the numbers that you're going to see. Maybe it's a, I'll just put an example as 300 milliamp, right? Now, you would see a different number, uh, but the number is not never going to be a con uh, constant so it's going to change all the time the reason is uh, the camera would require the camera is the ones that are going to take the amperage right the current and it, so if you if you block the camera with your hand and if the camera turn it in for right then you start taking more power then you can see more power going through so it's never going to be in one number so bear in mind the amperage always fluctuate right because it's how much the camera takes it what you're going to see through this meter right and now this is only for low current right bear in mind this is i'm i'm only doing for 12 volt right i'm not going to do this for anything anything like 230 volts uh, you know so there's a different way to do that right? i'll show you in next slides to come right so measuring a uh, amperage in a high voltage um there are different ways to measure you need to have the meters the correct meters to do that but i would say using a clamp meter is, is the best option because you're not going to touch any now we, we discussed about the insulators and conductors 
so the meter is a plastic, uh, uh, um, you know, meter made up made out of plastic. So you you are safe in sort of using these meters, right? Um, so let me show you how it's done. Now you can see this the clamp meter. So the first thing um, I need to set the meter, right? So I put it on amperage, alternative current, and um, then just you simply clamp it one one part of it, and um, and then you can see the current that it takes. Seen one of these uh, clamp meter, right? Uh, so these meters are uh, good in measuring high uh, voltage. Uh, 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 when you come to measuring a uh, uh, current in a high voltage, right? right so, what? Uh, so when you buy light bulb, you probably know that we say thirty watts, uh, sixty watts. So we told, what we are referring is we are referring the power. Yeah, what power it can give you, right? Uh, so what is this power in terms of uh, voltage and current? Uh, the formula is watts equal V times I, which is V is the voltage and I is your current, right? And that's how you measure the watts. Now, why we talk about it here? Uh, uh, because when we look at the camera specification, we're going to do that later. Uh, data sheet, you will find what the camera require. Manufacturer will say this camera require, let's say, six watts, right? If it's six watts, it's half a 0 0.5 amp, right? So it's understanding what is it meant by watts. It's important to us uh, when we look at the camera, how much the camera require, and also when you come to PoE at uh, you, you also see like uh, every slot has different uh, watts rates, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, that's about the watts and Ohm's law, right? Now, why uh, we're going to learn about Ohm's law, right? So Ohm's law is basically uh, looking at the relationship between voltage, uh, current, and resistant. Now we pretty much know what is voltage, is a pushing power. Um, what is current? The electron travel is current, you know. Um, then again, what is uh, resistance? Anything resist the flow of the current uh, will be seen as resistance. Now we look at the relationship between these three elements, right? So um, it, well, the, the formula is V equal I. That's the one I normally use because I'm going to work out when I'm uh, later, I'm going to work out. Like if I'm running a cable for a camera which require 12 volt, uh, maybe uh, 300 milliamp, and if I'm using a half a mil copper cable, uh, how far I can stretch the camera, right, from the power supply. So I'm going to work that out. And if I do that, I'm, I'm very concerned about knowing how much voltage that I'm going to lose. Because when, when you say 12 volt camera, it will now have a tolerance, say 10% tolerance, right? Then I need to know how much uh, voltage that I'm losing, right? Um, so I'm going to go through that a bit later, but just why it's important for us to do the voltage stuff, right? So let me ask a small questions, right? A uh, small question, just to sort of see that, you know, then you all understand what, what I'm trying to explain here. Um, how far you could run a cable for a CCTV camera? If a camera needs 12 volt, right? How far you could run uh, a cable from your power supply to this camera? Let's say you come across a small installation um, in a construction site. Um, then you, you have to run a cable. Okay, somebody say 20 meters. Somebody says, I have several DC. Okay, right, that's maybe for, right. So how fast, let's say you come across a construction site, right? Then you have to put cameras in the holdings, right? But then you're gonna run the cable around this fence, coming back to the security hub. Um, so, you have to have power. You can't have power at every single point, isn't it? You're going to have power at some uh, uh, some areas. Some areas you may not have power. So you're going to run cable from there to this camera to power this camera. So what is the distance? You could, you know, is there anything that you could just simply say, I can run for 50 meters, 60 meters? Now, the answer for this question is that you can't give an answer for this question, right? Uh, right, Paul, you say five meters. That's very interesting. Uh, Paul, why would you say five meters? Because I can see that you said five meters, and I'm sort of uh, want to find out how did he get that five meter?
All right, okay, all right. Now, it depends on various factors, like what Lou is saying, right? It depends on what the camera requires, right? That depends on these three factors we're talking about here, right? So what we're talking about is we're talking about V equal IL. What we're trying to find is the voltage drop, V. So if you want to find the voltage drop, bear in mind, you need to know what I, what is the figure that we get for I and R. Without those two figures, you wouldn't be able to find the voltage drop. This is why it's important for us to understand Ohm's law. Right. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm, I'm looking at a, a, a specific type of camera. Um, so I, I'm using Hikvision uh, and I've given the model number here of this camera. And um, if you look at this, if you look at the data sheet of this camera, it, under the technical specification, right? It then tells you what it's required in terms of uh, the power, right? It says the camera requires 12 volt plus or minus 10%, right? So when you have 12 volt plus or minus 10%, where would you see this? Okay, so this is the data sheet of this camera. So you, you know, when you buy a camera, you will have a data sheet sent to you. And if you don't have one, you can use the model number. And then from the manufacturer's website, you can download the data sheet. It gives you more information about the camera. What you see in the box is, is the selling features. Most of the time, it's more like a sales pitch. They tell you the good things, but not everything. But if you, if you have a data sheet, it talks about everything about the camera. It gives you a comprehensive view about uh, the technical side of the camera, right? So if you look at here, under power supply, you have 12 volt DC. So DC signifies is a direct current. 12 volt is what the camera requires. So you, what does it mean by plus or minus 10%? So plus, plus or minus 10% means it can have a variance. It can be 10% more than 12 volt or 10% less than 12 volt. So tell me, what is the 10% of 12 volt? One point two. Yeah, exactly. So if it's one point two, then what is the minimum voltage that camera requires? So in this in this example, what is the minimum voltage this camera requires? Now, if you look at it exactly, so it's one point no one is ten point eight, isn't it? It's uh, ten point eight, yeah. I also make mistake when it comes to the numbers, but it's not eleven point eight. Eleven point eight means it's only two point two difference, isn't it? Because it's one point two, it's ten point eight. So minimum the camera requires is ten point eight. Right. So when you run a cable from like I go back to my previous example, when you run the cable for 100 meters, right, you then have to make sure that you're not losing anything more than 1.2. If you are doing it, then obviously the camera, it's not going to work. Right. So that's what is important for us uh, when we design a system to understand about uh, Ohm's law. Right. So what factors um, what other uh, uh, what factors determine the voltage drop in electrical circuit is the cable length, uh, cable type, uh, cable type in the sense uh, you're looking at whether it's a copper cable, aluminium cable, or silver, you know, whatever the medium that you're using, and the size of the cable, the cross-sectional, uh, cross-section of the cable, right? Uh, and the power requirement, what does the camera require in terms of the power, right? So these are the things uh, it's important for us, right? Uh, what is a, a conductor? So we've done that in slaters. Okay, fine. So we're not talking about resistance, right? Um, so as I was explaining before, every material has its different uh, resistance, you know, based on the nature of that uh, material, like uh, gold or silver. Uh, so we call it uh, resistivity, right? Uh, struggle a little bit saying this word. Um, so basically, if you look at the copper, let's see what is the uh, uh, resistance that copper gives you. It's um, 1.72 times by 10 to the power of negative. That's the copper uh, resistance, right? Uh, now, if you look at that, silver has a lower resistance, so it's a better compared to copper. Aluminium have more resistance than copper. So compared to aluminium, it's always uh, a, be a better. Right. 
So let's look at uh, a small example here I've given. Uh, calculate the total DC resistance um, of 100 meters. Right, so I need to move my cursor in. All right, meter roll of 2.5 millimeter square copper wire if the resistivity of the copper at 20 Celsius is 1.7 by 10 to the power of negative eight meter, right? Um, so it just gives you a, a small uh, calculation to work out. Uh, so that will be the R equal 1.72 because it's a copper times 10 to the power of uh, negative eight uh, times by 100, that's the distance you're running. And the cable is 2.5 and it's million, so times by 10 to the power of six. So that will give you 688 uh, milliohms. Now, it, you don't need to worry too much about uh, these calculations because I can give you a calculator so you can simply use that calculator to, uh, to identify uh, the voltage drop, right? Uh, so I can do it in the next webinar. I can give you a calculator, a web calculator or an app. You can use that to do that. But again, just to understand uh, what goes behind the scene, you know? Um, now we got uh, a voltage drop. Uh, in, in America, they use AWG. Uh, so we, we call it American wire gauge, right? Uh, but in UK, we use millimeter square, right? So I don't know which country you are from, so it depends on your country. It's basically talking about the cross section of the cable, the thickness of the cable. That's what they're talking about here. Now, here you see, um, just give you a small comparison, like right? half a mil cable, half a mil, so 0 0.5 millimeter cable is what we use a lot in the copper uh, with CCTV application. It's 20 AWG. So you can now say 20. That's equivalent to You can do this calculation on Google, so you can get a calculator and say AW, convert AW to millimeter square, it then finds the value, right? So half a mil is equal to 20 AWG, right? Uh, whereas the resistance level of it is, uh, you can now see how much resistance per uh, thousand uh, feet here, because obviously it's a American one, but then again, how much resistance for thousand meter? So I can call it a kilometer, right? Gives you the resistant value of, of it yeah so so using those what we're so we get this one and what we're trying to do is um i'm just going to do a small chart just to explain you how this one's work right um we got using example here is a six watch camera uh we know that it draws half a m so if we are using a half a mil cable uh, which has a resistance of 0 0.037 ohm per meter and um, just go back, sorry, sorry, made a mistake. Uh, total length of the battery positive and battery negative was five meter, then the voltage drop. So you wanna find out, like going back to uh, the voltage drop. Um, so what is the voltage drop when you run a cable, which is half a mil cable uh, to a distance of five meter and the camera requires six watts, right? And the resistance of half a mil cable is 0 0.037 ohm per meter. Okay, let's work. Let's 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 put this in a in a small di uh, in a diagram so that you could uh, see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, in a second. So what we're talking about is um, we have a battery, right? And we got the camera here. Right. Okay, right. So we're running this cable for maybe I can put the battery like that. Okay, so it's look better. Right. So this distance that we're using here is uh, five meter, right? And the cable size is 0 0.5 millimeter square, right? It's a copper cable, right? And so when you have the cable size and you have the length of the cable, then would you be able to find the total resistance? Okay, this side is going to work. Then you need to find out what is the resistance per meter. So this is called five meters, isn't it? So if you look at it, it's 
So I'm going to say one, two, three. So is that, let's say that's one, two, three, four, five meters. So one meter, the resistance is zero point three seven ohms. Okay, so 0 0.37 volts. So for five meters, what you're going to get is, you're gonna get five times 0. Point seven isn't it so that's going to give you now i'm going to use my calculator because i'm not don't want to make any mistake there so five times 0 0.37 which is 1.0.185 ohms am i right right so you've got resistance, so the, the question tells you the resistance per meter uh, for a cable the size of half a mil, half a, a millimeter square, is 0 0.037 ohms. So if the resistance per meter is 0 0.37 and five meters, you simply multiply, that's the value you're gonna get, right? Then it tells the camera requires 0 0.5 amp, right? So instead of saying 0 0.5 amp, they can say six watts. It's the same thing. So let me go back and see whether it's, uh, yeah, six watts here. Six watts here, right? So how that one works, six watts equals V times I, right? So the V here is 12 volts. So we are talking about a camera which is 12 volt. We don't know the amperage, we say I, then you got six on this side, right? So in order to find I, simply divide six by 12, you're gonna get 0 0.5. Right, so you're gonna. So when you say six watts, I can say zero point five. The easiest way to understand this is here, yeah, because most of the cameras we're gonna work is gonna be twelve volt. Right. Having said that, you might get cameras work on twenty four volt as well. Right. But I'm just talking about in general. Most ninety percent of the cameras you're gonna come across is twelve volt. So when the camera manufacturer says it needs six watts, if you wanna find out the amperage, you simply divide that figure by twelve. So if it's twelve watts, then you divide it by twelve, then you get one amp. Right. That's the easiest way to do that because you can't apply watts in Ohm's law. It has to be amperage, right? So, so now I got my uh, I, which is 0 0.5, and I've got my total resistance, which is 0 0.185. That's my resistance. What I found previously was my total resistance because I got the, the, the question gives me resistance for one meter, but in this case it's five meter. To find the total resistance, I multiply. Right? Okay, so I've got chat coming in. Lovely, yeah. So now, to work out how much uh, voltage drop it's going to experience here would be, you simply multiply these two figures, isn't it? Because I'm gonna do it again here. Because the voltage drop formula that we saw previously, Ohm's law, was V equal I R, right? Right? So now we are trying to find the voltage drop. So we know the I, which is in this case is 0 0.5 times. Then we know the uh, R, the total resistance, 0.5. So that gives us 
<clears throat> sorry, as 0 0.185 times 0 0.5. So it's half of it, isn't it? So that gives us 0 0.0925. So if this camera has, uh, right, I've got another chat coming in. Okay, I'll come to that clue, right? Um, so if if this uh, uh, camera says, let's say, 10% variance, right? So that means 1.2 volt is what maximum you can lose here. But what you're actually losing here for this 5 meter, it's only 0 0.09. So that's absolutely fine for this camera to work. And this is how you do uh, voltage drop calculation for cam when you run cables for camera, when you design the cameras, when you start pulling the cable from the power supply to the camera, you need to understand this voltage drop, right? And it's also important, even if you're doing IP cameras, you can't simply say with your eyes closed, all IP cameras will go for 100 meters. That's not true, right? You may come across different cameras, uh, depends on what the camera need. You may not get 100 meters, right? So if you look at PDZ cameras, the cameras that move, it has motors, yeah? So the, for the motors to work, when you're moving the joystick, the motors work. For the motors to work, you need to have more energy, isn't it? So it's not going to be the same as a normal tiny camera. So the amperage that camera uses is higher than the normal camera. So certainly you can't do the same length as a normal camera, right? Now, if you under, then you need to understand the PoE all concepts, which we're going to discuss a bit later. So this is basically give you an understanding of how this uh, voltage drop work and how important it is for us uh, when we design systems. Anyone has. Um, come across any sort of experience when you come to voltage drop. So if any CCTV installers here today uh, who have come across experience, that various experience like when you when you encounter problems with voltage drop. Uh, if you're not sharing, I'm going to share my experience, right? So I had a phone call for, uh, for a um, call out uh, where they said the camera works but so, during night, the cameras don't work, but during the day, the camera works. Okay, so during the day, the camera works. During the night, the camera don't work. The reason is when, when they say 300 milliamp is what the camera require, the camera would not take 300 milliamp all the time. It only take that when the camera work to its maximum. So during the night, the camera now works with infrared and so on. So the voltage drop was uh, higher compared to the day. So day the camera was drawing very little, the night it was drawing more. So the amperage increase, when the amperage increase, the voltage drop also increase, right? So I'm gonna do a small video to explain you how this uh, amperage differs from day to night, right? Uh, but I'll do the video uh, for the next segment, I'll have a video so you can see the difference there. Yeah, so if you work for the worst come worst scenario, then you have enough power to cope with any problems that you have. That's, that's what we're doing. So we're always taking what the camera requires maximum, that so we're working for that, so that in that case, we are always in the safer uh, zone when it comes to voltage drop. So we're not going to have any problem as such. Right. So I'm just going to go back to a slide now. So that's, we just rounded the figure, so it's come to 0 0.09 volt. So. Now we're talking about extra low voltage. So there are a few things that I thought is uh, important for us to know, even though we just doing CCTV installation, pretty much to do with um, low current, you know, or we call it extra low current. So not necessarily to worry about the high current and so on, right? But having electrical background definitely help you, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, your power supply got to be connected to a mains, right? You can't plug it in because it's, it's not the professional way of doing it. It has to be connected to an unswitched fuse per. Right. Uh, then you need to understand how to safely isolate the circuit and also understand the different elements when it comes to the circuit. In the UK, we use uh, most of the time ring. Right. So in different part of the world, uh, either electric circuit work in different ways. Uh, but in the, I'm just taking the UK uh, standard now. Uh, so what is uh, UK? We use a code of practice called BS7671, which is the IE wiring regulation. 
um, that we use uh, here. Uh, so that's a, a recommendation for us or a code of practice given for elect people who work in the electrical industry, right? Now, um, so that code of practice um, uh, defined what is extra low voltage. So what is extra low voltage? Anyone has any idea what extra low voltage is or has anyone has ever come across uh, the phrase called extra low voltage? I'm sure there's, there are some electricians around this group today, no? Okay, extra low, low, low voltage when it comes to AC power is, uh, right, now we go, here we go, right, let's see. Yeah, 50 volt, yeah, lower than 50 volt for AC power. Uh, or 120 volt for a direct current ripple free. It's called extra low voltage, right? Uh, so it's it's not that it can't make. Um, obviously, it's not it's not you can't say that it's safe to work, um, but it's not life threatening, right? So extra low voltage. So most of the clauses falls outside the scope of uh, when when you come to extra low voltage, it falls outside the scope of 7671. So it's a reason that you don't necessarily have to be an electrician to do anything like low current. Right, extra low current. Right, so you don't need to be because whatever you do, it falls outside the scope of seven six seven one. Right. So what is RCD? Has anyone heard about RCD? Yeah, the residual current uh, is. Let me go back to there. Okay, anyone seen this one? Right. Okay, so what, what, what RCD does is, yeah, um, so you can see like there, there are different circuits here, I don't know whether it's uh, clearly written here, where you find like uh, one, one breaker for lighting, then you have ring, uh, so you have different circuit cooker and so on and so on. So you have these MCBs, uh, which is a miniature circuit board, uh, circuit breakers um, in the board, yeah. So they break, uh, they are there to protect the circuits overloading and so on. Then the MCPs are protected by RCD. So RCD is basically, if there is any leakage, uh, earth leakage, so let's take a toaster, right? Toaster has a, uh, it's a metal, isn't it? Uh, so when you have uh, your life going in, neutral going back, right? It has to have the same amount of uh, power going back, right? If somebody touches a short circuit, if it's a leakage, uh, that means it's basically, if somebody touch it, they might get uh, a shock, right? So in that the case, it wouldn't be the same power that goes back. So now what the RC does it, it reads the difference there, right? If it exceeds a certain amount of current, the RCD trips. So it, so in that way, the, the, the circuit will be isolated. So the person will, uh, you, know, you know, just to protect lives, that's why we all use RCD in the UK, right? Um, so we, we, the RCD trips at 30 milliamp, right? So anything more than 30 milliamp, the RCD will trip, so you will be disconnected from uh, the main power, right? So when the RCD trip, it's also gonna uh, disconnect the power for all these uh, MCBs here, because now you can see that um, these MCBs are protected via this RCD, and these MCBs are protected via this RCD, right? So if RCD trip, you probably experienced this in uh, your household, when you put a faulty kettle, uh, it trips, then some of the lights don't work, but some of the lights work, then you go back, take that out, then put it back again, then the whole thing come back again, right? So it's basically RCD protect the MCB. RCD is more sensitive than MCBs and it's to save lives in the UK, right? So um, in, Af in Africa, I think, it's, I'm not sure how that works, could be the other way around. They may use RCBOs and so on, but uh, the main function of RCD is to uh, trip um, and then protect the lives, right? So I'll go back to the previous slide now. So we got RCD is, uh, so why are we talking about RCD here? Uh, there's a, there was some time that uh, when you, when people uh, install CCD system, um, it, it, back in the days, it was mostly electrician installing it. So they run it to a separate breaker, right? So what breaker MCB, right? Miniature breaker. So when they do that, um, they, they go outside the RCD so that even though there's somebody, a, a nuisance trip, uh, your security system will be still working. Mm -hmm. it's, it's mostly with fire alarm and stuff, right? Now, uh, now the 18th editions uh, strongly recommend everything have to be inside RCD protected. So you can't go outside RCD, it has to be inside RCD now, right? So uh, when you talk to, when, you, when you've done your CCTV installation, now you're talking to an electrician and you're saying, I need a, a fuse spur, right? 
And you might ask you the question, do you want that to be on a separate breaker or you want that to be a spur, right? So in that, when he asked that question, you should be able to understand what he's referring to so that you could work with this electrician uh, to, 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 to complete your CCTV installation because your power box has to be connected to the main, right? So the electrician will now ask you the question, do you want me to run a separate breaker? So what that, when you say that, what he's trying to say is, he's trying to say, do you want a separate breaker? Yeah, separate circuit breaker. Or you say, it could be the same breaker, uh, it, could, it could be the same ring, sorry, and then you're just spurring it out. So it could be from the normal ring, you're spurring it out, right? No, Louis, it, it not necessarily ha always have to be a separate breaker. So if he, the problem now is, if you wanna go on a separate breaker, then you've got to be an electrician, right? Or you have to refer that job to an electrician because in the UK, you cannot touch a consumer unit uh, without you being a qualified, a competent person, right? Uh, so for, now why would you need a separate breaker is that you don't want any nuisance stripping on it, right? Now, even if you connect your system to an existing ring, to a spur, as long as you've got a battery backup, you're fine. Even the main goes safer. So imagine like, put it this way, simple way. You put a faulty kettle, uh, it, it trips the whole circuit, right? But again, if you connect this one to a, uh, if your system has a battery backup, the battery backup is gonna keep your system running, isn't it? So you don't have to go on a separate breaker. If you go on a separate breaker, of course you need then have to hand over that work to an electrician. So you can't do it yourself, right? That's in UK, but I'm sure pretty, it's, pretty, it's gonna be the same with any countries, you know, because people will not take this for granted. Uh, so what is spur? You're spurring out from an existing ring. Now, POE, right? So now, has anyone got experience installing POE cameras? I know Luis does certainly has experience in it. So when you come to POE, there's two types of, uh, we, we're only talking about the power in this uh, webinar. We're not talking about anything else. But when you come to the power, you've got two types of uh, standard that can be used. Uh, you can use 802.3 AF or AT, right? AF or AT. Uh, the difference between these two standards is um, okay. The difference between these two standards is um, the AF is uh, is basically about the power. Yeah, on an AT you could have more voltage and more power, so you can have anything like six hundred uh, milliamp on it. Whereas the AF uh, is only three hundred milliamp. Right. So when you buy a camera, you need to make sure what this camera standard is, which I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you in a minute. Right. Um, so let me look at this one. So the latest update to POE is the IE 802380 um, standard known as POE plus. So it's the same thing, even if it's a POE plus or AT, they're referring to the same thing. The, the major difference between these two is that um, it is providing almost twice as much power that you get with uh, the old type of systems. So they're getting 300 milliamp, now you're getting almost 600 milliamp with that, right? So how does it work? Uh, in, a, in a previous segment, I'll, 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 show, I'll explain how to crimp uh, RJ45 connectors. You've seen this one, right? Now you've got different eight pins there. Now, if you actually look at this one, it's only using just four, two pairs for uh, data transmission. It's one pin one, two, three, and six, right? Pin one and two is transmitted, pin three and six is received. So data transmitted, data received. And if you look at four, five, and then seven and eight is not being used, it's pair, right? So now those pairs are being utilized to run electricity. And this is how on a Cat5 cable, you're getting power, power over ethernet. is basically, you're using the spare cables or spare pairs that not being utilized for data transmission to send power. So what that means to us is, um, at the end of the day, it also have the same voltage drop problems, uh, the same uh, problems of understanding what the camera require. So we, we are not doing anything, we're not doing a magic here, we're just using two extra pairs to send power. That's what it is, right? So um, when it comes to, sorry, let, uh, somebody wants to add something. Um, they would be, 
would that be a power interference when you do a PoE cameras? Um, yes, there would be a power interference uh, with the PoE camera, but you, you need to understand PoE cameras are mostly digital cameras, right? In a digital cameras, how the signal travels in the form of binary plus uh, one or zero, right? So the digital, in digital cameras, um, the signals, since it's going by binary, the it's not that obvious for you to see any interference, not like analog cameras. Analog cameras is a frequency, right? So you have to take care, you have to consider that part as well, right? So, but yes, you have uh, interference. So if, in fact, if you look at uh, BS7671, I'll go back to the electrical standard. If you look at that, there's something called cable segregation. So if anyone, electricians here will understand what I'm talking about here, cable segregation means a data cable and a main cable. So what voltage we have in, 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 um, in UK is 230 volt, the mains, yeah? So when you run your cable, you always have to have a certain gap, right? Now, I don't want to go detail, but I will say, if your cable is screen, and if you're running with a main cable, the gap between your cable and the main cable has to be at least, at least, right, uh, 50 millimeter, that's five centimeter, right? That if your cable is screen, your data cable is screen. If both cables are not screen, it has to be 12.5 inch, right? So um, obviously I, I will not go into detail, but yes, the interference is uh, there. The only place you don't get interference is if you are using a fiber optics cable, right? Because it's, it's light, right? Apart from that, you get interference. So that's, uh, but it's not obvious. It's not very obvious as uh, uh, a um, data sheet uh, to show you uh, where you would see this in, um, uh, a, a camera, right? You can see here under this is a uh, equation PoE uh, switch, right? And uh, this is what I talked about. I've sort of uh, explained you about um, the PoE standard here. So it, this this particular switch is uh, compliance to both standard AF and AT. So what that means is uh, you could connect a, a camera which is AT or AF. It doesn't matter. It compliance to both, right? Um, okay, here, uh, this is a camera, right? It's an automatic number plate recognition cameras of efficient ultra low, uh, low light called dark fighter, I believe. Uh, so on that one, so you can now see, um, it, it, uh, we have a kind of highlighted here. Uh, it, it's an 80, so it requires more power, right? And also, uh, it tells you what class is fall under. Uh, class is class four, so it's a high voltage camera. So if you for this camera, if you get a switch which is um, not eight zero two three eighty, if you get the AF switch which is the low current, uh, then it's not going to work, right? So you have to make sure you always get the switch which is also uh, uh, um, um, in a, in compliance to the standard the same standard, then it works, then you will not have any problem, right? So if you look at here, it says uh, 12 volt uh, plus or minus 10 percent. Now you understand what this what is meant by plus or minus 10 percent. Then if you look at uh, the, again, the PoE side of it, it then says 802380. Uh, so it's the high uh, voltage camera, right? And then the class, uh, class four. So that's the camera specification. When you look at, uh, um, um, a switch, a PoE switch, to go with this camera, and then it comes to the next one, that's the switch, that's not a camera, it's a PoE switch. If you look at that one, it also, now this one, you could use it with that camera because it supports both, it supports AF and AT. I mean, it's very obvious, if you buy AT one, um, or PoE plus, it's definitely gonna support PoE because it's more than what the PoE requires, right? So it's definitely gonna support PoE, so that's what you see there, right? And um, in fact, if I go back to, the previous uh, one of the slide that I showed you before, uh, you would see the same uh, here. That one, right? So if you look at this one, again, it uh, I've sort of uh, when we were do when we saw this slide for the first time, we were just talking about the voltage drop, but now we discuss about uh, the PoE uh, power side of it. Now, if you look at that one, that's a PoE AF, so it's a low. Uh, current, uh, sorry, low voltage uh, camera. So you could still connect this camera to the uh, switch that we saw now, because it's, it supports FAF and AT, so PoE and PoE plus, right? So now when you look at this data sheet, 
I believe that you now get a, a better understanding of how this power structure works, right? So this is a uh, IP camera, I believe, and then the again it says 12 volt DC. It's need a DC power plus or minus 10 percent. That's a variance. That's a tolerance. Then when you come to PoE, if you are connecting PoE, then it has to be PoE 802 AF. Now, if you look at, uh, you can do a small check today. Once you've done this webinar, go and check a uh, um, the good good brand here, yeah, anything that well known brand. Just go and check a PoE camera uh, PG set, the one that moved with the motors and everything, and check the power requirement whether it's an A F or AT, so you can get an understanding how this ones work, right? So when it's AF, the maximum amperage you could run would be what amperage you can run on AF, maximum. Any idea? What is the maximum current you can run on AF, A zero, uh, two, three, AF on this one? It's 300 milliamp, isn't it? 300 milliamp. But if it's an AT, you could go up to 600, almost a double, right? So 300 milliamp is it's a tiny, that's the maximum you can run. So you can't run it for a, uh, in a huge uh, uh, P2Z camera. So you've got to understand how this uh, uh, power work when you come to PoE. So just to summarize, in PoE, you have two types, PoE and PoE plus. So PoE plus require more power. Um, so P2Z cameras all fall under PoE plus, right? So anything like it can take up to anything like 600 milliamp. And when you come to PoE, uh, normal PoE, or known as 802.3 AF, um, it, maximum is uh, 300 uh, million, right? Right. So now, what what can happen happen is that uh, we we're gonna um, make these uh, slides available for you to download, right? So all you have to do is or download or via email. It's up to you. Um, so and also it's gonna be on YouTube, so you can check the YouTube uh, channel, right? Uh, so what is um, going to happen now is if anyone wants this slides to be emailed to you, please drop your email address in the chat, right? And uh, my colleague Wale will send you an email with these slides, right? Um, and um, again, I mean, don't worry too much about it because it's going to be on YouTube. So you could watch this video, um, you know, at your own time uh, if you subscribe to our channel. So don't forget to subscribe and also share our channel. Um, so I'll, we, we are planning to uh, have more webinars, uh, so I'm going to make more webinars in future. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please let me know. Yeah, Paul, I'll do that. Yeah, uh, my colleague Willie will send you an email with that. Um, so if you have any any recommendation, anything that you know, uh, please let me know. Uh, we are, we are doing another uh, uh, webinar soon about um, um again in cctv uh but I'll, I'll be presenting the webinar from our training center so i'll get more opportunity for you to show around and show you all the equipments live uh, when i'm hosting that webinar um because i'm trying to uh be compliance with what the government guidelines at uh, at the moment uh, to stay at home um you know but again uh, by next week i'll you know, fingers crossed, uh, they may ease off. Uh, so, yeah, the YouTube channel is called uh, If You Type uh, Cube CCTV Training. So, C U B E, Cube CCTV Training. Um, you will get the YouTube uh, site. Then you can um, obviously subscribe to the site. And then, and if you go, if you're working on social media, if you, sorry, if you're active in social media, uh, you could also come to a, a social media page, Facebook. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me. Um, and then also, I, I, I strongly believe you, you have taken something from this webinar. Um, as I said, we're going to have more webinars uh, in future. So please keep tuned to our YouTube and um, Facebook. And also, if you're not uh, subscribed to our website, do subscribe so that we can send you uh, updates. Right. Uh, thank you so much and um, um, stay at home if it's possible uh, because we all been classified as uh, essential workers if you are working uh, installing cameras and so on so you can go there but make sure you have all your PPE uh, don't take risks and my advice uh, have your face mask right uh, 